And we're back at the line table for our final topic this week. What will happen to travelers if Amtrak's route through Albuquerque is eliminated? President Trump's proposed budget would cut money for all 15 of Amtrak's long-distance passenger rail routes. That includes our still Los Angeles, the Southwest Chief. According to a recent article in USA Today, this would make it impossible to travel via train to the West Coast, the South, the nation's midsection, eradicating the concept of a national rail system, Sophie. And that's a quote. I, I, I love that quote. We could be caught in a real buzzsaw here for a lot of folks here in Albuquerque. It's not just in Albuquerque. Income. I Thank mean, remember, this is yeah, the, this right. train travels through the state, so it's Raton, too. It's other parts of the state. That's right. And um, these are communities that really rely on that that transit. So, right. um, you know, I, I think I think that this is, while it's not a done deal, we're talking about national budgets, and as we know, mm -hmm. it's got to make it through Congress, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's worth getting worked up about, and it's also worth noting that that's, those, that same set of uh, proposals from President Trump mm -hmm. include uh, cutting money to the essential air service, which also hits large parts of this state, mm -hmm. and to FEMA. And I think about I think about our you know propensity for wildfire and things right. like that. These are really essential services yeah. here in New Mexico that mm -hmm. we cannot afford to lose, and they're not the only ones that are on the chopping block. That's right. That's right, Harry. You know, interestingly, we can make fun of Congress in lots of different ways, mm -hmm. but there is a strain here in our Congress that's been there for years that do right. not want to fund anything that moves poor people from point A to point B. Right. Yeah. Just don't want to do it. Absolutely. There's no way. Yeah. How, where do we come in here as a public? This is always my big frustration right. with Amtrak that we don't raise our voices and let right. these folks know that yeah. this is a critical part of, mm -hmm. of our national system here. I, I think that's exactly right. And given the sheer number of rural people that are served by Amtrak, but then other things that are proposed being cut, like the essential air service right. uh, for uh, small communities around the state and around the uh, country, mm -hmm. the broader problem, I think, is that we're dem not demanding the quality of infrastructure that we get in other countries. Mm -hmm. So I often uh, visit my uh, son in Germany, and the quality of train service there and the quality of associated infrastructure just puts us to a shame. And the, the big issue for me is not just Amtrak as Amtrak, as important as that is, mm -hmm. it's that we don't demand the kind of infrastructure that you need for a 21st century economy. That's right. Think about the, the high-speed rail uh, ideas that were turned down in Florida, turned mm -hmm. down in Wisconsin, right? They sent yep. back the federal money when Obama, <laughs> right. you know, and the Congress approved it. It's, it's kind of and interesting And there's just some things yeah. you can't leave to the market. There are That's some right. things that you need yeah. government support for. Yeah. Right there. That's an excellent point. Pick up on that if you would. Is this not an, uh, a public obligation that we provide transportation for each other here through our tax dollars? Absolutely. I think yeah, it is yeah. a public obligation, and mm -hmm. I think it's really going to affect poor people quite a lot and rural parts of the state. I mean, we're so a lot of people are well aware that Albuquerque has, you know, a, a Amtrak um, route that goes right through here, um, right. but there's one that goes through Deming, my hometown. Mm -hmm. That's right. um, and I distinctly remember when I was, um, you know, when I graduated from high school and I had very little money and I'd had a summer job, I saved enough money not to be able to afford a Southwest Airlines flight, but to be able to afford a ticket from, uh, I, caught a, I caught a little ride to Albuquerque with a friend who was at UNM. But I, I rode the train for the first time, and that was the furthest east I'd ever been past Hobbs, New Mexico. Yeah. Rode it east to Chicago and then to Boston, and that's how I got to school the first time. Also, when we had the winter um, problems in 2011, and my mom's uh, house flooded and her pipes right. broke, I put her on a train in Deming to go out to stay with my sister in California. I mean, these are essential services. These that's are right. people who don't have any other means in that's many right. cases. This is affordable to them. And we're talking about just essentially isolating a lot of these rural communities communities that don't have a lot of options. Not everybody can get into a car and, you know, drive across country or afford a plane ticket. And so I think that this is something that fundamentally, I think, rubs certainly me the wrong way and a lot of people in the West the, the wrong way because of, I mean, we're talking about a guy who clearly has the means to travel in a lot of, in a very different way and is isolated in, you know, Manhattan. Yes. And so just not understanding the way that the, the West and the way a lot of rural communities function, right. I mean, cutting this is just a nonsense. It's interesting. We were talking, Janice, before we started taping this. I take the Southwest Chief to L.A. quite a bit, twice a year sometimes. And it's interesting, I, you know, to make a general judgment, I'm going to say a lot of the folks that I witness on the train are not going to be parsing Southwest.com website for the best deals. You know what I mean? Don't want to be with a broad brush here, but the important part of this is Folks can rely on a very specific price when it comes to Amtrak, especially in an emergency. If you have to get to L.A. in, in 24 hours, say for a medical emergency with a, with a parent, it's going to be the same price as it was last week in the month before. You can rely on that. You can't do that with an airline. 
the day before. Do you know what I mean? So what are poor people supposed to do if they have, have a, an emergency here? You see where I'm going with this? I, it's I, a difficulty. I, I hear you, and, yeah. and so let me Please. give you the other side. Okay. Is that is that's really good. But what if the people who are administering saying we are subsidizing this to such an extent, you're, you're fair, we appreciate that, but we are not going to be able to operate if we keep doing that. And so everybody loses it. Mm -hmm. uh, what I see for the Western United States, especially for New Mexico, is regional transit districts that are going to pick up the load because the truth is, is when you only have Amtrak going through the state with very few stops, mm -hmm. uh, does it serve the communities like Santa Rosa or Farmington mm -hmm. where the chapter houses are kind of far flung and they really need transportation sure. mm -hmm. and so we are going to have to figure out and literally back into the technology here and so while I think this is all very romantic and I loved riding the super chief when I first moved out here in 1963 we would go home my my grandfather was the yard master at the St. Joseph um, Santa Fe Atchison Topeka and Santa Fe rail yard and so we could go to Kansas City and then up to St. Joe can't do that anymore unless you go to Chicago right. and so now we have a system that you've got to trade time and money mm -hmm. you know and can can you afford the time no, maybe I'm sure I'm hearing you correctly. Do you would say technology could pick up some of the freight here? In, in what sense? Absolutely. Uh -huh. So one is if the cost of the long the long distance rides, rail doesn't make sense except for cargo and only over 200 miles. For it to be effective for people, you need more frequent stops. Mm -hmm. And but you can't make it pay with more frequent stops. And and so. Uh, if we let it go and said, okay, if we had more regional transit districts who take that money right. and make a more efficient bus system, and I'm concerned because our buses are dwindling as well. That's a good point. Um, but we are kind of at a crucible mm -hmm. of technology, you know, and if you look at uh, Eastern Europe in particular, um, in the 60s, they didn't have landlines. They never had landlines. They went directly to cell telephone. Mm -hmm. That's sort of what's starting to happen here. And it's just are, like- are you, are you saying also that unless Amtrak is able to pay for itself, clean, without anybody, you know, ticket prices, all that kind of thing, that we should be doing something else? I, I'm saying mm -hmm. that while it's really nice to say that we are going to do that, and I'm going to bring our own rail runner into, um, let me just remind you that we have a balloon payment coming up. It's substantial. Uh, that isn't it. The problem is, is we don't have enough people, but we have people who have a more localized transportation problem. Mm -hmm. And if we, we focus, if we let go of some of the long distance and focus on and put that money in the, in the regional transit districts, mm -hmm. might we create greater connectors which would allow them to get where they need to go. Possible. And, Possible. and, and so yeah. it's, not, it's not an either or, it's a choice of, okay, how are we gonna solve this problem? Good point there. I, I hear those points. That's interesting for the future to think about for sure, no doubt about it. What do, what do we stand, I'll go back to Laura sanchez Reveda, something I mentioned earlier. The frustration that us as a public tends to be very quiet about Amtrak, except when it's just about to be killed. Then we all rise up <laughs> and say, oh, you can't do this. You can't blame Congress for doing what they're gonna do if they don't hear from us. Does that make sense to you? Is that a, you well, know, people don't know your story about what you'd mentioned with your mom. Right. No, you that's know, true. I, it's not like I'm, yeah, I'm not calling my members of Congress about it, right. but I'm happy to mention it to them and hope they watch this. Um, no, I think you're right, but I also think there's a difference between our members of Congress being in tune with what what is needed and, and desired in their mm -hmm. district and what the president, a, a mm -hmm. president who's mm -hmm. very much detached from, I think, a lot of Americans, um, what his priorities are. So right. I think that's that's one issue. Right. Um, I hope that you know, as the as the you know representatives of the people, the legislature, the Congress will actually um, reflect what's wanted out here, what the priorities are. And I do think that this is, I mean, this is one something that needs needs to continue for now to, to be subsidized at the federal level mm -hmm. because it doesn't function otherwise. I think that Janice's suggestion of the regional transit districts are interesting and, and could work very well. And uh, to me, it reminds me of um, transmission issues because I know energy uh, well and I understand exactly. transmission. And we don't have transmission, regional transmission organizations mm -hmm. here the way you do in other parts of the country. So and so there, there are some... Um, natural challenges to that because we don't have the density to be able to deal with some of these issues. Gotcha. Um, but I think as we develop, that's certainly something to consider. But to do just a, a, a cut the way he has um, in, in his priorities will just throw a lot of people into a very difficult right. spot. And also lurking underneath this, we need to finish, but also lurking underneath this, guys, is this idea of not liking transportation also fits art. 
Mm -hmm. Also fits. You know what I mean? This oh, mind, you know what I mean? There's a mindset out there that we just need to deal with. That's all the time we have for this week. I apologize, Jance. I know you got a big point. We're ready to go there. Mm -hmm. Hang on. Thank you all. Good stuff on a Friday night.